I want to give a big techno buffalo size hug to Cavo for sponsoring this video and generally making content like this happen. What's going on everybody? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and it seems like every Note video I do somehow morphs into like a family vlog, going all the way back to the Note 7. And I wanted to revisit the Note 9, and somehow it turned out to be the same thing. It's surprisingly been three months since the Note 9 came out, and there's been so many phones that have come out since. In all honesty, I kind of forgot about it, and maybe you guys have too, since the Note 9 hit. We've had Pixels, we've had iPhones, we've got some of the best from Huawei that have hit, the OnePlus 6T, and all these phones are neck, neck, and, and neck, and it can be tough to pick the right one. So my initial plan was to take the phone home and use it over Thanksgiving break and revisit it. Turns out, my entire family got sick and I was shut in for five days, really only staring at the screen on the Note 9. So fair warning, there's excessive sweatpants, pajamas, and sick kids in this video. Since I last turned the phone on, there have been about six iterative software updates. And Samsung notoriously is not the fastest for big OS updates like Oreo to Pi, but they do a nice job with sort of the smaller incremental type updates. So what we've got now on the Note 9 is a pretty mature and optimized version of Android 8.1. So the most recent update was claiming camera improvements and bug fixes, so figure we'd give it a shot. I fought the urge to put the leaked beta of Samsung's One UI and Android Pie on here, but hear me out, I wanted to use a phone as Samsung intended, not base my thoughts and opinions on some leaked beta issues. So when that does hit, I promise you we will do an entirely separate video on One UI and the Note 9. So on the initial review, I absolutely loved the phone, but I did, in all fairness, have a few issues, so let's just start with those issues. The iris detection would not work with sunglasses on. So when I was outside, once I locked my phone, I had to take them off. It was annoying. Samsung fixed it. Not only does it work now with sunglasses and polarized sunglasses, it actually works really quickly. So nice work, Samsung. The other issue I had was signal strength. So our review, we did it on a six state road trip and I couldn't necessarily get a strong signal as we were driving across all of those states. And I couldn't duplicate the road trip side of it, but I do somehow manage to live in a complete cellular wasteland. And I was able to pull down a consistent one of two bars-ish on LTE, and that doesn't mean much, but it meant to me was that I could make phone calls and phone calls came in, and that in itself was huge. The other big knock was price. I mean, this phone goes as high as 1,250 bucks, and that seemed insane at the time. And then the iPhone came out, told Samsung to hold its beer. And being the holiday season, there are huge discounts now to be had on the Note 9. So the price issue really isn't so much of an issue anymore. I've seen discounts as much as five or 600 bucks uh, on some carriers. Also, this is going back to our S9 review. I mocked Samsung's internet browser and I was shocked with the passion and the, I guess, love you guys had in the comments. So while I was stuck at home taking care of sick kids, I use internet browser exclusively. And while I still maintain it's not quite the level of Chrome, admittedly, it's better than I expected. So I'm gonna be a big person, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit that I was wrong. is is not that bad. It's actually, it's actually pretty useful. So while we're on the topic of things that I was wrong about but now miss, IR blasters. I didn't really care much about them when they were on Samsung phones. But now that they're gone, I got an IR shaped hole in my heart. Now I doubt it's ever gonna come back to Samsung flagships, but there are some pretty awesome third party products that can do the same thing plus a ton more. Cue the smooth transition to our sponsor, Cabo. So while Cabo won't really help you on the go, it will help you while your whole family is sick, stuck at home. Cabo's one family-friendly remote makes it really easy. Just push a button and say, watch PJ Mask, and it'll pull up PJ Mask for you if it's available on different apps. It'll let you pick which app you want to use. You no longer have to search and peck and hunt for different apps or change different inputs. And also kind of cool, you can never lose your remote. It'll pair with Amazon Alexa or Google Home and you could say Google Home, find my remote and your remote will buzz. But all of this awesomeness, AI magic does cost a little bit of Skrilla. There's a free 45 day trial if you want to try it. And then it's $2 a month or $19.99 a year. Or if you just want to pay once and be done, you could pay 60 bucks and you don't have to worry about it for paying again. If it sounds like something that you want to try, we'll link down below. Use our code Buffalo and hit that link and you get 30% off. I think it's worth it. It's one that I've been following for years and you guys should give it a shot.
All right, so onto those camera updates, and there's been a ton of them here. So for fun, I took a bunch of pictures before the software update, and then tried to duplicate them afterwards. There was like about 30 minutes in between. I never thought that the camera launched slow on the Note 9, but it launches noticeably quicker. Pictures also still look incredible. It does appear the default saturation, which is kind of a Samsung hallmark, got toned down a bit. To my eye, they looked a little bit more natural. Also, the live focus, so I guess Samsung's portrait mode, I thought does a really good job, especially when you have multiple people. So I had all my kids sitting on my lap, did a really nice job with focus and the gradual background blur. The HDR2, which already looked awesome, seemed to improve to my eyes, but I don't know, maybe it's psychosomatic. You can, you can tell me in the comments. Video quality on the Note 9 still blows me away. The speakers on this thing are a beast, and I'm surprised that no one's talking about how good the built-in mics are. They don't sound better than they did initially, but they still sound really good. And after not using the phone for a while, I personally forgot how good Samsung screens just look. And I think it's a matter of fact to say that Samsung makes the best screens in mobile, even if the default resolution is set to full HD+. I also really like how Samsung does are always on display, and since it had been about five weeks, I also forgot how much Samsung's default notification tone bothers me. That is the first thing I change when I switch to a Samsung phone. I'm still digging the launcher, even though it's gonna be different when one UI comes. I didn't install a third-party launcher. I'm still okay with it. The S Pen was nice to have. I used it just for the sake of testing. Being able to take selfies was is nice. I don't draw that much on the screen. I know it's a big reason people get the Note phones is for the S Pen. It didn't feel giantly improved over what I had before, but before it was really good. The S Pen is the best version of a stylus right now uh, on a phone. So if you like taking notes on your phone, the Note 9 is still gonna be good. And obviously the size didn't change, but it feels gigantic in the hand and the back is a little bit slippery and a warning it is not sweatpants friendly i was on an absolute tear over the holiday weekend losing stuff i, I had a minor heart attack and thought i lost my wedding ring and for a solid 10 minutes i was pretty sure that i also uh managed to lose the note 9. it slipped out of my pocket when i was just chilling with sweatpants in between the couch cushions which also means it can slip out if you are out and about and perhaps go crashing on the floor. Fortunately, I haven't dropped it yet, but the back is somehow crazy scratched. But in all fairness, the screen is not scratched at all, so that's good. Battery is still awesome. It's a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And I saw about 10%-ish improvement for what I saw when I first reviewed it. So obviously software has gotten better. It also still charges insanely fast. Other things that seem improved, intelligence scan unlock is also quicker. I liked having the LED notification back. It was nice after coming from the 6T that got rid of it. I also still love Samsung Pay, although I didn't get out to try it. And hallelujah, there's a headphone jack on here that I, that I didn't need to use over the weekend, but it's here, and it's got IP68, and they put a big battery in there. The Note 9 kind of checks every single box that you would expect. Performance was still really good. I know Samsung's got a bit of a rep for slowing down over time. I know the slowdown issues, six six RAM, and a Snapdragon 845 is generally a recipe for speed, and Samsung's got it down. Obviously, when one UI hits, it's gonna get faster, but no speed decreases, and it seemed like a speedy little demon to me. I felt like bad for almost forgetting about the Note 9. It is a phone that just came out and should be considered amongst the pantheon of the best phones in the market, not just the best Android phones. And now with huge discounts, it's even more of sort of an appealing prospect. If you want a phone that's gonna be fast, if you want a phone that's going to have amongst the best cameras out there and hands down have the best screen, give you performance, give you battery life, and at least know that at some point in the near future, uh, it is going to get Android Pie. The Note 9 is an awesome phone, and I kinda don't wanna forget about it again. I'm gonna keep using it. I'm gonna keep it on my desk so I can stare at it and remember this. And when one UI hits, again, we will do another revisited video. So generally, I'm pretty harsh in the reviews, but again, I wanna give Samsung credit for fixing the problems that I had with the initial review. Did you guys pick up a Note 9, especially during the holiday sales? Did you pick one up when it came out back in August? Hope to hear your thoughts on it. So that was three months later with the Note 9. My initial plan was to go out and about with my family and retest the phone. Instead, I got shut in and got to use the phone much more than a human being should be on a phone. 
If you guys liked these visited videos, let us know in the comments down below. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. So Zachary, this has pretty much been our weekend, right? Hanging out? Nobody's really gotten out of our jammas? No. What kind of, what jammas are you wearing here? What do you have? Monster Inca. Monster Inca. And Daddy is just wearing clothes. We shouldn't go outside, should we? No. no. So what are we playing with? A car. A cars? Cool. Sick kids. Let's try to do our best sick impression, okay? Ready? You do it first. Okay, I'll do mine now. You okay? What is? So, um, how are you guys been feeling this weekend? Yeah, we've pretty much just been hanging out, huh? Yeah. Yeah? You guys want to give, give a wave? Yeah. Yeah, we spent a lot of time in the house. Sick and still smiling. Alright, bye guys. <laughs>